this is the last online. So it's my pleasure to welcome you, students, to this very class. Today, I prepared you a subject. Today, we'll be discussing English language too. Uh, as we'll be discussing, we'll confine ourselves to this particular topic, which is appreciating literary works. But again, um, we'll confine further to this uh, subtopic, which is prose, in which we'll be looking at plays where we'll be analyzing. During an analysis of such a place, we'll be led or guided by a question. And that question asks, students, here is our very question that we'll be uh, discussing throughout. Now, the question goes like this. The playwright's choice of content is a reflection of what is happening in the societies. Now, using two plays you have studied under this program, support this statement. Now, as we'll be supporting the statement, um, use four points from each play. Students, it's very much important to understand the requirements of the question. It's, it's not uh, wise for you to just uh, start or to jump um, to an introduction prior to uh, understanding or prior to understand the requirements of the question. Now, the word uh, playwrights or playwright should be very clear to you. And I believe uh, you guys, you know the meaning of playwright. Now, look, uh, you should look at the key word that is um, found in this particular question. And obvious, the word content is one of the key words that need uh, to be qualified. You need to tell the examiner the meaning of content by understanding um, uh, the key term found in, um, in the question. Now, ask yourself, what next after understanding the key term? Now, we are told here that use two plays to support the statement that the playwright choice of content is a reflection of what is happening in the societies. My dear students, these playwrights, these are, are human beings. These are the writers of the play. Now, these uh, playwrights do not have their own world. They are not living in, in their uh, own world. Rather, they are living in the society. Or they are living in our societies. So whatever is being... Um, discussed in their works, or whatever uh, is being written in their plays is a reflection of what is happening on the ground. The playwrights, as human beings, do not uh, just come up with their own things from the sky or from the vacuum. No. They do write things which are happening in our uh, societies or in their societies. So these are like the eyes of, the, of their societies. They use their pen and the papers as their weapon to write what is happening in their, uh, in their societies. Uh, having that said, let us now go to an introduction. Now, it said earlier that uh, content being our, our key term in our question need to be clarified. Now, here we go. Content denotes the issues or things being portrayed in a literary works, which include theme, themes, messages, etc. 
Now, the content portrayed in a work of art relates to what happens in your societies. The playwright in a play between the city and the playwright of an enemy of the people have chosen a content which relates to real life. From a play between the city, the themes, which again, one of the elements of a content, relate to real life, include the following. Dear students, this is uh, an introduction. This is one of the key terms that need to be, because we'll be um, uh, discussing throughout issues to do with content. So, now, we start with this play, Betrayal in the City. Then we'll be looking at this, uh, issues discussed in there, which relate to what is happening in your societies. Students, uh, from a play titled Betrayal in the City, the themes relating to real life include the following. Now, look here, my dear students. You should state your point in a topic sentence. Now, uh, here is just an example for you to guide you on how to respond um, to such, on how to respond to a given question. Now, with this one now, the portrayal of favoritism corresponds to what is happening in our societies. I'm saying in our societies because even the playwrights found in our societies. Now, uh, favoritism, this is unfair help. Somebody somewhere is being assisted to get something or to get a certain service, not because that person deserves. Rather, is being favored on the ground that maybe um, uh, that person shares the same tribe. Or that person uh, is being favored because they are coming from the same family or clan. So that is a, that's the favoritism. Somebody is being favored. Somebody is being helped on the ground of either knowing each other, their friends, or they share the same tribe. Or they are uh, family related. Now this theme is portrayed in the play where we see the boss appoints his cousin Mulili to be his chief advisor. Now Mulili gets appointed. Mulili is appointed not because he deserves such a post. Rather, Mulili and the boss are related. They are family related. And now Mulili becomes the eyes and the ears of the boss. Uh, as you remember, Mulili is incompetent, but is being favored by his um, cousin, students. This uh, kind of um, uh, favoritism is also, is also practiced in your society, in your society, in our societies, where we see some people are being appointed, are being favored in various job opportunities, not because they, they deserve, not because they qualify, not because they have credentials. Some are being favored. Remember, I'm not saying all people who are, um, are in job opportunities or who have been, have been employed, they have been favored. No, some. Some people have this kind of um, um, behavior, which is really bad. Favoritism um, read to social economic development because you may uh, favor somebody and uh, and put into an employment, but that person doesn't deserve, of which will result into backwardness in terms of development, because such a person is incompetent. Students, favoritism should be strongly discouraged in your society. 
People should be appointed on the, uh, on the fact that they qualify the post they are being given. People should follow the procedures of getting somebody into an employment and not basing on um, uh, either tribe or basing on um, family uh, relationship or friendship. Students, in the same same play, uh, we see Ascari mistreat Jerry in the prison. You remember this? Jerry is, mis uh, is being mistreated just because they do not sh belong to the same tribe. In the prison, somebody is being, uh, is being served with tea, is given tea, or is, is given some food stuff. But the other one is not given such a food stuff because he or she is not sharing the same tribe. So here again, is, um, we should um, discourage, we should strongly discourage this kind of um, tribalism. Tribalism uh, in, some, in, in some societies has read, has contributed so, to so many chaos, which resulted into bloodshed. People die because of tribalism. So, you and I should discourage uh, tribalism. We should discourage favoritism of whatever sort, of whatever shape, so as we realize social economic development. Students, let's just move to the second point. Here we come. The, uh, the portrayal of selfishness of some, of some people resembles to what is happening on the ground resembles to what is happening in your society. Now, with this term, selfishness, it's a tendency of one caring about oneself, where an individual accumulates worth to benefit himself or herself, and ignoring others. One becomes so much concerned about his personal affairs, about his well-being, and others are being neglected. So the, the playwrights, Francis Mbuga is, is, is adding light, is putting light on this issue, that this uh, selfishness is something exists in our society. But again, in the play now, uh, through Mulili, one comes to understand that the boss owns an overseas bank account where he hides his money. The boss in the play has opened an overseas bank account where his money is being hidden. Now, leaders of this particular type, again, have to be reported to the relevant organs and eventually being taken to the court of law. By hiding, uh, by opening an overseas account, he hides his money. It's something that um, read to economic backwardness. As money circulation in, uh, in his country becomes down. People fail to access loan. And this person, he does all this for private gains. Because uh, this person is having um, uh, selfish tendencies or tendencies of caring about oneself. Students, this selfishness is also present in our societies. There are some leaders who practice selfishness. There are some leaders in our societies or in our society who hides money in the foreign account. Now, such leaders are the enemies of um, social economic development. And therefore, such a leaders have to be reported to the relevant organs. Students, let's just move to the next point. Here we come. The playwright, or the playwright who is Francis Mbuga in this very play, depicts some cultural and traditional practices. Now, with cultural and traditional practices, this has to do with the whole total way of life including beliefs, way of worshipping, way of dressing, 
etc. Now, each society has, has these traditional, has these cultural practices. Now, first thing in Buga now in the play tells us or shows Doga and Nina are seen preparing for a shaving ceremony of their son Adika who died during our demonstration. Students, Nina and Doga, they are at the graveyard. If you read a book, Francis Mbogis tells us that Nina and Doga are at the graveyard preparing a sh uh, shaving ceremony for their son. They believe that uh, failure to perform such a ceremony, the spirit of Adika will be mad or will turn mad. So they have to fulfill such a traditional or cultural um, requirement of performing um, a, sh a shaving ceremony. In my society, in your society, we have these cultural issues or traditional um, uh, issues. May not be resemble is what Nina and Doga um, uh, uh, perform, but it has to do with cultural and traditional um, practices. Students, so, remember the so called Arubaini that is being conducted when a person has been buried, then after 40 days, people or the family concerned or the beloved family come together. It's like a ceremony. Now, that is traditional. They believe also that um, once such a such thing is not or without being performed, then that person who died won't be pleased. So it's a belief. People believe so. Students, we have so many uh, uh, traditional and, uh, and cultural practices. Some are good and, and others are not good. So I encourage you, all the bird cultural and traditional practices should be discouraged. We should only embrace, we should only honor the, uh, the practices which are really good and not um, other uh, traditional practices which are bad. So let us move to the next point. Here we come. The other element of content which Francis Mbuga is, is putting forth or has put forth is betrayal. This is an, an act of being disloyal. Betrayal means being disloyal to an agreement. When somebody is fails to honor an agreement, a mutual agreement that you have entered, then one will be uh, betraying, going against an agreement. Now, Francis Mbugana is revealing to us, is telling us that in the society there is such a thing where we see Mulili betrays the boss by saying he's just a distant cousin. Remember, Mulili and the boss, these are related. Are family related people. Now, we see in the play where um, now the life of Mulili is in jeopardy. The life of Mulili is at stake. Now, uh, Mulili um, tells the public that um, he's just my decent cousin. This again is a uh, betrayal. Mulili um, is, uh, is displaying disloyal. Similarly to our society, we see this betrayal. People are betraying one another, either at the family level, society level, even the country level, there are people who are betraying their country. They become traitors. They, are, they, they side with enemies to betray their own country. At the family level, there are people who betray their wives, their husbands. People are betraying their friends. Betrayal, again, my dear students, is something that should not be honored. Betrayal should be strongly, strongly be discouraged. Since betrayal may lead to so many consequences. Betrayal may lead to hatred. 
Betrayal may lead to um, separation. Betrayal may lead to disintegration of the family. So we should not embrace betrayal. We should strongly discourage uh, this kind of practice. Dear students, in the same same play, Francis Mbuga shows us uh, that Jerry, Jerry um, allows Dog and Nina to conduct their ceremony, their shaving, shaving ceremony. We are taught um, in the book that Jerry and Muriri were instructed to go to this family of Nina and Doga and stop them from conducting such a shaving, shaving ceremony of their son Adika. At first, they agree. Mlili and, Mlili and Jerry we, uh, agree that yes, they, uh, they'll be together in stopping such a um, ceremony. But later on, we see Jerry betrays Mulili as he allows Dog and Nina to conduct the saving ceremony, which was prohibited by the state. Now we see now Jerry and Mulili are in conflict. Students, betrayal, a said earlier, should not be embraced or praised. Students, having this said, let us now have a short break, then uh, move to the next play. Students, now let us move to another or second play and see uh, the choice of the content. Now, our second play is titled An Enemy of the People. Remember, it's not necessarily choosing this play. You may choose even other play. One may choose, I will marry when I want. It's okay. So uh, as of today, I've uh, chosen this um, an enemy of the people and see uh, the, the relevant themes or the choice of the content. Now, here we come. Oppression and humiliation have been discussed in the play. Now, um, with this particular uh, phrase, oppression and humiliation, it's an unfair treatment where an individual is put into shame, where an individual is harassed, where an individual is being treated in a harsh manner and causing um, physical injuries or psychological injuries. Now, this particular theme is portrayed in the play. Now, can you tell who uh, was harassed, who was oppressed, who was humiliated in the play? Obvious, yes. Dr. Thomas Stockman went through this humiliation and oppression. Dr. Stockman was fired from the job. Dr. Stockman house was vandalized. His house was turned down. The same person Dr. Stockman was declared publicly is an enemy of the people. Now, all these are elements of oppression, humiliation, harassment. Students, this kind of behavior or practice of oppressing somebody, harassing somebody, bullying one another, it makes somebody feel ashamed. You are putting some, somebody into shame. You are causing um, a physical and psychological torture to someone. By making somebody feel bad, you're harassing. Now, in the play, we see Dr. Thomas Stockman going through such a um, situation. The daughter of Dr. Thomas Stockman is fired from, uh, from a job of being a teacher. You remember Petro, right? And his children, Arif and Morton, are being suspended from school. Not because they, uh, they commit a crime or not because they offend somebody. They get suspended or that kid, those such, such children get suspended from school because of their father's stand or attempt of revealing the truth. That tendency is it's an oppression. It's a humiliation. Something which we should not entertain. We should strongly discourage uh, these tendencies of harassing, of oppressing, of humiliating others. If somebody has offended you, there are ways 
of reporting such a person. If at school, you may report such a person to a teacher or to a guardian or a patron or a matron, but not harassing or oppressing others or bullying others. Students, this oppression and humiliation again, they are relevant to our societies. There are people who are being humiliated. There are people who are being oppressed. So you and I have a role to play to stop this kind of uh, practice. Students, let's move to next point. Revenge is another re relevant issue portrayed in the play. Students, revenge is another relevant issue portrayed in the play. The concept of revenge is like paying an evil to an evil. That means when somebody has wronged you, you also think of or wishing to pay an evil or to do likewise. Somebody has wronged you and also you plan to do the same to him or her. It's a revenge. Students, we see revenge in this particular play where the mayor of the town who is Peter Stockman dismisses Dr. Thomas Stockman from the position where he was serving as a medical officer of the town. Now he does all this as a revenge because doctor refuses to denounce his report, to denounce his discovery that, that the water in the spa bath are contaminated. Now, doctor is wishing to, to reveal um, his discovery to the public. Now, doctor, I mean, uh, Peter Stockman, the mayor now. Students, now here is another um, uh, element of content, which is a theme. The playwright depicts the issue of sacrifice. Now, if I'm to ask you, what, the, what do you understand by this term, sacrifice? The term sacrifice, my dear students, one would say, in this particular context, one would say, giving out something which is precious in order to save others. One for a goal, his precious, his valuable things, including his life, so as to save others. It's a sacrifice. Now, in the play, Dr. Thomas Stockman pays a sacrifice. Dr. Thomas Tuckman offers his body, sacrifices his time, his energy to save other people. We see in the play, Dr. Thomas Tuckman struggles to reveal the truth about the contamination of water in the spa bath. He made a discovery where he spent so much time by taking the sample of the water from the spa bath and taking them to a university laboratory of which later on we are told that such water is not healthy for human being consumption. Now he does all this in order to save the lives of other people. Now we see Dr. Dr. Thomas Tuckman now by doing that by sacrificing, he ended up being beaten. Those times uh, we are told in the play, Dr. Thomas Tuckman is fired from the job. His house is vandalized. His trouser was torn. But he never surrendered. He never retreated. He kept, he kept on moving forward to save uh, the, the lives of other people. Now... Um, Dr. Stockman now, by sacrificing to the point of being declared as an, an enemy of the people, to the point of being alienated 
This is a sacrifice. And he, he does all these for the benefit of the majority. Now, in a normal situation, are you, can you put your, yourself in the shoes of Dr. Thomas Tuckman? Are you ready to sacrifice for fellow Tanzanians? Are you ready to, uh, to sacrifice for the well-being of your, uh, your fellow students? You remember Dika in the play um, Between the City? A Dika on the front line demonstrating to, sh to express their dissatisfaction that the government is employing uh, the for foreigners Experts, employing uh, experts from overseas. Now, Adika demonstrated, sacrificed, and he died. Now, are you ready for that? Okay, now, from our society now, do we have such a thing? Do we have people who sacrifice? Do we have people with this spirit? Do we have people who are committed enough for well-being of others? Students, look at my Mirere, sacrificed for you and I to live. My Mirere sacrificed for Tanzanians. Kwame Nkrumah did the same. Our leaders, our present leaders, do sacrifice for the benefit of our nation, or for the benefits of the present and the future generation where one is being uh, denounced, where one is being um, um, arenated, a reader can be hated by so many people, the insiders and the outsiders, for the good of majority, for the good of Tanzanians, for the good of you and I. Students, sometimes sacrifice is of beneficial. It's something that we need to, uh, to do it. It's something that we need to go through in order to save others. Let's move to the second point. S students, here is our point. That the other relevant issue portrayed by playwright is ignorance. Ignorance means lack of knowledge of something. When one doesn't have an understanding of certain, a certain situation or certain thing, then that person is ignorant. In some point, you and I, we are ignorant. Now, the playwright, Henrik Ebsen, is revealing this uh, issue of ignorance to us. Uh, he reveals such an issue by showing this, um, the majority in the play, as uh, they fail to identify the true enemy of their social economic uh, challenges, where they, uh, they treat Dr. Thomas Tuckman as the enemy of which later on they declared him as an enemy of the people. Where we see, because of, of the ignorance, they alienate Dr. Thomas Stockman and uh, they give him a name. Why, in fact, Dr. Thomas Stockman was their savior who labored a lot to investigate the problem that people. Um, face in his society. As a medical officer struggled the source of their health problem. But later on, out of ignorance, these people, or the majority, treat Dr. Thomas Stockman as their enemy. Now back to you. Who do you think was the true enemy of uh, this particular society, or of these particular people? Obviously, you say, Peter Stockman, the mayor, the mayor of the town, was um, an enemy of the people. Now, back to your society. Do we have people who are ignorant? Do we have people who um, uh, fail to identify the true enemy of their social, uh, of their miserable life? Students, obviously, you say yes. We see now, in your society, where out of ignorance, people are being, um, are being faked. Where we see in your society, people elect some leaders because 
where we see in your society some people are like ignorant. Out of ignorance, they may choose even the leaders who are incompetent. The level of reasoning is very low. Eventually, they end up choosing a leader who is incompetent. And later on, such society suffers the consequences. Now, the playwright here tells us that we should, we should get rid of ignorance. We should fight against ignorance. We should, be, we should be able to identify the true enemy, the true friend, the true readers who is really committed to take us to other levels of life or to the next level of life. If you are to live in a society where um, uh, there are so many ignorant people, then we won't be able to achieve social economic development. We should fight against ignorance. A society which is conscious, a society which has knowledge, a society which is aware of what is going on in the society, such society is also capable of choosing proper leaders. Such society is also capable of making wise decisions. Such a society is strong enough to say no to fake leaders. Students, let us move again to next point. Here we come. Protest is also depicted in the play as a the theme which is relevant to a society. A protest means showing dissatisfaction towards something which is unpleasant. When somebody is not pleased with a certain situation, then um, he or she protests that he or she shows his dissatisfaction. Now, in a, in a, in a play now, we see Dr. Thomas Tuckman shows his, his disapproval. Dr. Stockman um, protests against the leadership of mayor, who is Peter Stockman, who is selfish. He doesn't care about the welfare of others. He doesn't care the lives of many. Now here we see Dr. Thomas Stockman struggling to reveal the truth, to find the truth and uh, put, it, put it to the public. But Peter Stockman also is struggling to make sure that the truth is not re revealed to the public. At the end of the day, we see uh, Peter Stockman firing or sacking Dr. Thomas Stockman from the job. We see Peter, St Peter Stockman, the mayor, firing uh, Petra. Peter Stockman is a reason for Petra to be, uh, to be fired from the job. Peter Stockman is a reason uh, for Captain Hoster to be fired from, from his job. Peter Stockman is a reason for doctor's um, sons to be suspended from the school. Now, doctor protest. Doctor is not happy. Doctor shows his dissatisfaction towards the leadership of Peter Stockman. Students, similarly to a society, we see protest. People are showing that their, dissatisf their dissatisfaction. We see people are, are demonstrating. People boycott. We see, uh, for example, through the trade unions, where we see people boycott. We see students go on the, go on the street and uh, demonstrate or riot because they are not happy with uh, some issues uh, taking place in their society. We see some, uh, some polit polit politicians together with their followers demonstrating. They demonstrate in the way of protesting they are showing their dissatisfaction. Again, I encourage you students to show 
your dissatisfaction. If the situation is not uh, at your favor, is not pleasing you, you need to show. There are so many ways of, uh, of showing your dissatisfaction. Leave alone demonstrating. Leave alone boycotting. Leave alone riot. You can protest by writing a poem. You can protest by writing a play, a short story. In there, you show your feelings. In there, you show your emotions that you're not happy with, the, uh, with, this, with some situation taking place in your society, in your school. Students, remember, during the struggle of our independence, when Mnyelele protested, when Mnyelele was not happy with the, the leadership of the, uh, of the colonialists, was not happy with the colonialism and all the colonial masters. So he protested. And, uh, and on his back, there were Tanzanians, so many Tanzanians on his back, supporting him, moving forward. Dr. Martin Luther King protested. So students, at some point, protest is good, but should be um, non-violent protest. Non-violent protest. I don't encourage you to use violent, to kill weapons, then uh, you protest. No. My dear students, now let's just go now to our conclusion. Here is our conclusion. Now, uh, your, your conclusion should reflect what you have discussed there above. Here is just an example, the way you can conclude your essay. It can be concluded that the playwrights play an important role in building the present and the future generation by revealing wrongdoings prevail in their society. The same playwrights call upon the society to get united fighting in fighting against the evils and honoring the acceptable practices. Dear students, now this is just one way. You can, you can, you can conclude even the other way around. That uh, the playwrights now, they have shown issues prevailing in the set. They have chosen a content. Now, in the content, if there are good things, if there are good practices, such issues should be honored. If there are content, portrays all the negatives. Now, such a negatives should be strongly discouraged. Students, the said area, in a conclusion, or your conclusion should reflect the issues that you have, you have discussed in your content or in your points. The other way of making your conclusion uh, attractive is by asking a very simple question. And that question is, so what next? Or what is the situation after? Now for you now, here being the content, or uh, being the content of, of, uh, of the playwrights, they have chosen that content. A very simple question. Ask yourself, what is the situation after? Or what next thereafter? What next after, the, after all the content you have discussed, after all the issues, after all the themes. Now, what next? Now, the answer of your question will be your conclusion by saying, given the above um, um, issues portrayed in such a place, it can be said that, or it can be concluded that, the positive issues portrayed in the play should be honored, and the issues which are negative should strongly be discouraged. My dear students, now this marks the end of our session today. Thank you for your attention. So, till next time, may God bless you. Thank you.